Welcome back to part 21 of the 999 playthrough, and oh, we've got back in time again. Hooray! Only now we're back to the first half of the game. Yep, um, back to where we kind of were before, but this time we're going through the laboratory room again, but on one condition. We've actually gone through door number five first, and as we've mentioned multiple times throughout this playthrough, this is the correct route in order to get the required ending. Gotcha. This isn't because you gotta get because you get a certain item in the first set of rooms that determines what information you get in the second set of rooms. Uh, more so that you went through uh, the the room with a certain person, and that certain person is going to become very crucial to the development of the plot from henceforth. I mean, not not that they weren't crucial. All nine people are equally important. Yes, even the ninth man, Mr. Ground Beef himself, with the personality of a lasagna throughout this entire game. Yes, he's equally as important. With the personality of one and was also turned into one. Uh, what a shame. And, yeah, uh, laboratory, pretty much the same as before, went, even during my playthrough, replay through the game. Your re re replay through yeah, the many playthroughs have been had with this one. Um, not not really improved. I did realize, though, did learn, that you don't even have to have Clover do all these little shenanigans here. I mean, you have to have her do a couple things, but you could pretty much solve the um, the little touchpad puzzle all by yourself. You don't even need the, um, yeah, the, what we just got here. You don't even need, need the uh, button order oh, neat. at all. Well, I know that, uh, like, the towel in one of the other puzzle rooms, like, that one's completely optional. So there's lots of um, optional items that are more used as hints than actual solutions to puzzles. Yeah, and it's uh, nice to see that they designed it around like that, because, again, we go through these puzzles a, a good amount of times, so having them have ways in order to get them out of the room faster is nice. Yeah, even if you're not shortening it by too much, just the fact that there is a shorter option, you know, that can still feel rewarding to the player, sometimes. The conversation that we're going to have with Lotus, which is a much more extended conversation than the one we had last time, where we said she was old and she just told us to fuck off, um, has to all, all has to do with this computer and, of course, the more morphine and morphonegetic morph <sighs> one more time rich evans okay <clears throat> morphogenetic field yay okay. congratulations uh, mm -hmm. yeah a theory created by the mm, the scientist <laughs> in general terms rupert sheldrake who is an actual person he's like he's and he's still alive as well um and he, he's, he's got quite a bit of history behind him, even though what he's done research into isn't very, I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't say helpful, but not very practical, Ah, uh, I would say. He, he's not, he's a scientist, he's not a science engineer, he, he's all about concept, and stuff that doesn't really, you know, work in reality, but works so very well in his big smart brain of his. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who, who even know? It, it's like with a whole, hell of a lot of theories, right? Uh, and elements you see in science fiction. Who even knows if it actually exists? <laughs> a lot of it actually doesn't. Oh, as well. well. One one thing I like about this room now that we've seen um, the submarine ending and I've gotten some information is, um, you know, knowing already that Lotus is a mother. So the whole oh the you're an old lady joke it doesn't even apply here. Like, forget it. We know that she's a mother, that her kids have been kidnapped, and like that she's gone through shit. And also, with this puzzle, it involves you communicating to another person. It kind of goes back to the whole transmitter-receiver thing mm. again. A lot of things going back to that whole, uh, at least those principles that they were discussing in the other endings. And then now we're going to be getting even more information about, you know, wireless communication, this metaphysical communication... Uh, and again, we're getting very specific with the name drops on the morphogenetic field. That okay, this is the specific theory where that all of these are trying to test for. 
Yeah, it's what it all revolves around, and there are multiple ways they try to they demonstrate that, but it's all around the same concept. Yeah, you know how everyone was magically able to see the dog more. That that's science, right? Yeah, that was an actual. Uh, it was based off an actual event as well. I th- I'm not sure if we ever mentioned that, but um, it was I forget what it was called. It it has a um, silly name because they brought it back in Zero Time Dilemma. Yeah, yeah. It was on some British TV show. Uh, oh, here it is. It's all, uh, Tomorrow's World. It was in, conducted in 1984, and it was pretty much very similar to what the game demonstrated uh, here, where, I mean, people were separated into groups, never seen each other before, and they were told to try to tell the scientists or researchers i should say what they thought the painting was is it a dog is it is it a lady uh, with a with a hat is it the fun Rimpy? who knows <laughs> fun Rimpy, that's a stupid name i'm so i'm so sad that this never actually came back or maybe it did and i just forgot it junpei says it again in a, in zero time dilemma so there's that so it's brought back but i Again, with Lotus, she worked for a cybersecurity firm. Like she just happened to get kidnapped after like her one day a week, you know, Zumba lesson class, and that's why everyone's all shocked that she's in that she's good at computers. Like, come on, guys, she just happened to get kidnapped on her hobby day. It happened, yeah. and she never quite goes into why she didn't stick around there, but. I mean, there there are some pretty obvious implications. I mean, the whole kidnapped daughters, probably witness protection. There's a there's a list. Yeah, and given the ages of those uh, daughters as well as and her age, um, I mean, I I can pretty much assume like why. Yeah. Although, actually, no, I'm probably thinking of it incorrectly. No. Nah, nah. I'm I'm thinking of <laughs> dirty stuff. Please don't do that. Okay. She's a respectable woman. All right. She's clearly a woman of agency. Cares deeply about her daughters. Yeah, and throughout this sequence, she goes on this weird spiel about the wireless display, which is like kind of interesting in and of itself. But she kind of goes about it. <laughs> First of all, she treats Junpei like a complete dumbass which she's right to do which she's right to do yes yes but still considering we were playing as junpei i felt offended myself and at the implication that she thought i was a dumbass and didn't know how this worked which i didn't really but who cares The fact that we're getting yet another allegory when we're already, like I said, we're this far deep into what the morphogenetic field is. Like, even if this is your first playthrough as well, getting this many um, allegories for just wireless communication, like, oh, sometimes the screen isn't connected to the computer. It's like, well, well yeah, like that's not, it's not special. It's not, that's, it's not talk. You guys aren't, I think you're putting that on the level of evidence as you know, apparently everyone magically, psychically communicating that the picture is a dog. Like, you're just gonna put, you're gonna throw that out there, and then also, oh yeah, sometimes the computer monitors aren't connected to their computer. Woo, scary stories from beyond. It's like, what the? F- okay. <laughs> cool game. I mean, I, I'm absolutely have- spooked. I am so <laughs> spooked by wireless monitors now. Well, whatever they have to do in order to get the point across. Yeah, see, even Junpei agrees. It's like a, it's like a cult. It's like a fucking cult. Wait, cults, cults have nothing to do with this game or anything in else in the series, and you know, until the whole series decided to go off the rails and then back on the rails, and it started rail drifting into a fucking curve. No, 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 no. This series was never really on the rails at all. When you think about it, it even when it looked like it was on the rails, it was actually like as far away. From the rails as it could get. See, so yeah, I like this that Junpei knows what aphasia is, so, which is good. I mean, at least he, he's aware of word salad. But yeah, um, we gotta take note of this prognosis here, this miscommunication between what is uh, 
essentially what your senses detect and what your mind perceives. So, and then in the case of certain conditions where it's not really known what where the error in lies, uh, with, with that condition, with people's faces looking blank, uh, I've seen yeah. things where it's like there's not actual physical damage to the eye. So is it uh, a neurological issue where the wiring from the eyeballs to the brain is an issue, or is it where the brain's data processing of the information from the eyeballs, if the error is in there? Yeah, it's very strange disease, and it's a, quite a rare one as well. But yeah, it's 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 like one of those diseases where it doesn't. It kind of affects your perception of, of a, a lot of a lot of things, but it's not something that I guess is gonna get you in the end or something like most diseases would be it's just very <laughs> inconvenient it, it's something that you can definitely function with um it's something that i feel you would would need to be detected early and then a child would obviously have to maybe some uh behavior work with it and just working around it mostly but i mean it's not something that handicaps you physically uh so but you know people handle conditions differently we'll just see how where it comes to play this plot later on kid readers we'll 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 hope we'll see if you all know where this is all going y'all better i mean this game is old as hell if you're this far in you know what the fuck's going on we, we've already played the mini game or not the mini game the puzzle we've already solved the puzzle that's the first piece this is the second piece And I've seen how one with the disease would perceive faces, and I mean, according to this game, though, it's creepy. It's very creepy. Yeah, uh, if you go on the wiki for this game, that they've done some sort of uh, kind of what the characters would look like from the perspective of someone with a uh... prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia, and it's essentially just the eyes are basically picture default face and then kind of put vaseline over it to smear it just because um with some research into it there is some data loss at least again i'm not sure where it is mechanically or uh perceptionally but there is some data loss so features are blurred um especially in recollections for uh, people who have the condition and when they see people's faces yeah at least this game has the courtesy to imagine that disease would from the perspective of someone with that disease they would still be able to see faces of some sort even if it were that default face um but from what i can tell wouldn't it wouldn't it be like get to the maybe get to the point where it would just be a complete blur they wouldn't even be able to recognize eyes or ears or the mouth or the nose at all i feel that there would be some people that it would go in the reverse that because faces would be so bland, they would pick up on like the, even the subtlest of differences, like colors of eyes. Like I feel like someone with that condition, that would be their working mechanisms that, okay, I know that you're the one who has, you know, they'll find some sort of difference in there and try to like latch onto it. I feel instead of being yeah. able to go off of like the full picture, uh, like in the broad recollection, instead remember try and find a detail because they can physically see details. It's not like like they're blind. Like they could probably get up close and notice a scar, and then probably be able to identify you from that or something. It, like again, it seems like a very workable condition. It's just uh, I don't know. Definitely the social and emotional stunt stunting from it could affect some people negatively. But definitely you could probably work it out in some way. But while we're talking about that, is Clover's giving information about Snake. Oh, right, this little bit. Um, there's going to be other characters in the series that get uh, fake arms, right? Oh, do, do I? I'm not even sure. I don't even know what f <laughs> prosthetics would have in the place of the Zero Time series, Zero Escape series. Exactly. I mean, it's not like hands are going to be cut several times to reveal blood what no that's not not even a thing blood's not blood and gory in my zero escape games for shame for shame 
Shame on you, Zero Time Dilemma. You really are the black sheep of the series. No <laughs> one should play you. Except you How dare you have blood? <laughs> I didn't even know what blood was before playing that game. <laughs> I had youth and innocence, and then I played Zero Time Dilemma, and it was blackened with its filthy deceits. And it's blood. And for those of you pointing out that there's blood in this and Versus Last War, that, that's fake blood. Zero Time Dilemma has real blood. <laughs> right? Because that's the one true timeline that leads to the end. All the other timelines end, so that blood's not fake. That's that's time blood. <laughs> time blood. <laughs> uh, I still also want to point out how kind of really creepy this laboratory is, just kind of like the torture room. Um, just, just, what kind of experiments do they do in here? What kind of research as well? Well, I think we already know that they were doing a lot of, uh, morphogenetic passing from transmitter to receivers, and so obviously those probes were to go on the children, certain children's heads, maybe while they were in that, I don't know, I'm trying to remember, Seven knew of the children, and we knew of the experiments. We didn't know if the children were related to those experiments, so we just know that experiments involving the morphogenetic field were happening here, and there were clearly no safety precautions taken because you know the connectors <laughs> there just sort of spontaneously combust. All in the name of slash price of science. <laughs> it's all for the sake of science, folks. 